Welcome back everyone, Dan Vega here, and we're going to continue on our series here of looking at some of the new features available to us in Spring Boot 1.4.0 Milestone 2. And in the last screencast, we looked at a pretty cool new feature that's a part of Spring 4.3, and that is the ability to auto-wire components uh, in a constructor without having to use that out at auto wired annotation. So if you haven't seen that one, I will link to that. Go check that out. So we're here in the documentation, a nice little write-up by Phil Webb of what was added in 1.4.0 M2. And if we go ahead and go down here, I'm gonna go into the release notes. And in the release notes, I'm gonna go to 1.4.2. And again, just like the last video, I just want to point out that down here in the release notes, it says Spring, Spring Boot 1.4 builds on and requires the Spring Framework 4.3. So there were a lot of cool little features added in Spring Framework 4.3. And so subsequently, we get those as part of Spring Boot 1.4. So if we jump into the Spring Framework documentation, there is also a section on what's new in 4.3. And that's where this screencast is going to really start. So one of the things that they've added, well, they haven't added in this one, but they made some changes too. Um, composed annotations got a little bit more powerful. And I bring that up only because it's kind of related to what we're looking at today. And so really a composed annotation is an annotation that that is composed of other annotations. So it's not starting from scratch and using like a completely new annotation to provide us with some behavior. It is composed of another annotation and over, you know, or sets some defaults and basically overrides that annotation. So with that, if we go down here, there's some web improvements. Uh, we can see one of the first ones here is there's new annotations for things like get mapping, post mapping, put mapping, delete, and patch. And that's where this tutorial is going to begin. So a little, the easiest way to do that is let's just go in and create a new project and look at what this is and how this is going to help us out. So I'm going to create a new project. We're going to start with the Spring Initializer. I'm using Java 8. Uh, we're going to hit Next. Let's say uh, a request mapping. And this is going to be a, uh, we're going to use Java 1.8. We're using Java. Let's say the real Dan Vega. And the rest of this is fine. Uh, again, all we really care about is the web. Um, oh, why is that doing that? All we really care about is adding web to this. But we do need to make sure that we select the Spring Boot version 1.4.0 milestone 2. Uh, because anything prior to this won't have Spring 4.3, and therefore this will not work. So we're going to click Next. Uh, everything looks good here. And I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. So this is a pretty basic project. This is going to look a lot like the last one. Uh, we have our main Spring Boot application here. And I'm going to come in here and create a couple things. So let's create a domain package. Let's create a uh, service, let's say controller package, and finally we'll create a service package. All right, so now we have these three packages. Let's go ahead and create a domain class. This is really just gonna be, we're gonna call this user. This is really just um, a representation of a user. We'll say that it has an ID. We'll say that it has a first, last, an email address, nothing fancy going on here. Let's go ahead and close that. Now what I need to do is create a user controller. So I'm going to create user controller. And in here, this is going to be a REST controller. And let's go ahead and we will create a couple methods. So this should look pretty familiar. We actually did something similar, similar to this in the last screencast. And so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and create a variable called user service and we're gonna have a constructor here and we'll say hello oops this is a user controller 
and this is going to take something of user service and this dot user service is equal to whatever we get passed here in the argument so now what we need to do is actually create this user service so let's create a class called user service and this is going to go in our service package and again this is remember we need to annotate this with uh, stereotype service so if we go ahead and save that uh, we're starting to look good here so now back in our controller remember from our last video we do not need to use the auto wired annotation this is automatically going to get injected to it into this constructor for us as of 4.3 so that's kind of cool so now we probably have done something similar to this. We, we have a couple methods in here. Let's start off with um, quest mapping and we're gonna have a path of, let's say users. Uh, it's gonna have an ID. Uh, this is gonna have a request method of request dot, whoop, request dot, request method dot get. All right, we'll call this we're going to return a user. We'll call this find. Uh, we have a path variable here. We'll call that of type long ID. And this is going to return our user service dot find user. And that's of type ID. Okay, so we need to import user. We need to create this method in our service. So let's create that method. Um, we're not going to do anything special here. Really, this is just a demo. I'm just going to return a new user just to satisfy this. So that's that. That works. Okay, and then maybe we have a scenario where we're creating a new one. So we go users new, and the method for that is going to be request method dot post. Okay, so public void, this is called a create. Maybe we are validating this. Um, let's say user, user. And inside of here, all we're going to do is user service.create, and we're going to pass in our user. All right, and then here we need to go ahead and create that method. So this is going to create a new user. Again, for this purpose, we're not going to actually implement that, but that's kind of our service. So while all of this is fine and dandy, this is something that we've all probably done at some point. This works. But one of the complaints were a lot of the ceremony around creating request mappings, right? So you don't actually need to set a request me a method equal to get because by default the request mapping is going to be a get. Um, but in this instance, we do need to say, hey, this is a request method of type post. So again, a lot of these attributes that you're passing to these annotations can get noisy. Um, this is just two methods, but you can imagine we have 10 methods in here. Um, we have a lot of other things going on. Maybe we have bigger URLs or bigger paths. So again, it can get to be pretty noisy. So what Spring 4.3 adds for us are a few new annotations that are composed annotations of request mapping. So in this instance, we could say get mapping. So this is, a, this is like request mapping. Again, it's a composed annotation. It's not rewriting this logic. It's composing request mapping. And it's basically setting the default method to request method.get. So in this case, we can just pass in a path. Uh, so we'll have users slash ID. And that will satisfy that. Now, obviously, where the real power comes in is not in a, in a get because that was the default, but even a post. So now if we want to say post mapping, and we can say what the, the uh, path is user new, you know, now we don't have all of that ceremony, that noise of passing in all of those attributes. So to me, this is just a lot cleaner, um, not a huge change, but again, just, just kind of cleans up our controller class. Uh, if somebody 
were uh, coming brand new to Spring or Spring Boot, and they looked at this and they looked at Git mapping, post mapping. They they can kind of figure out if they've done any MVC before, kind of what's going on here without you know understanding exactly what that what that annotation is doing. So I think that's it. Uh, again, we're gonna look at some more features in. Spring Boot 1.4 and Spring Framework 4.3 as we move along here. But I hope you like this, and if you do, please subscribe, give me that thumbs up, uh, leave me some comments, let me know what you'd like to see. Uh, I love working on these little demos like this, so I'd love to hear from you. Thanks, and have a good one.